G'day and welcome to Queensland Farmer. Well today we're uh, feeling quite fortunate. We've got Eric here from Change the Soil and we're at the spot here today where we've previously had uh, issues with uh, erosion. Now these issues were borne by the traffic from the cattle moving up and down the fences and if you look back on some of those videos that we've done previously we've put some mulch down here and the cattle have been along here they've done lots of poos all over it they've dropped plenty of manure and this area is going to be a place that we're going to do some more work on before we get to that i'd like to introduce eric from change the soil so eric yeah. you've had a chance to go around the farm today um, what are some of the things that you've observed and what do you think that we should be doing here yeah look First of all, thanks for having me, Chris. Um, I have noticed a lot of compacted ground around your property, uh, partly cattle traffic related, uh, but also, as you can see, the ground behind us, it's uh, obviously been a lot of scrub soil over the long term, and we need to uh, maybe look at different ways of increasing soil diversity. Uh, mainly by the use of biology and living roots. So that's what I'd intend to try and do a bit of trial work on today. Okay, well that sounds interesting. Yeah, so so. I, I know that we've got some poultry manure and we've got a spreader. Yep. I know we've got some seeds as well. Correct. So yeah. I think you had a plan that we're going to divvy up this area. Exactly what were the combinations right. you were thinking that we might use? Well, you've already started here. As you point out, the cattle have been through on a bombing run, dropping on top of your uh, hay here. So I thought we'd use the timber posts as uh, basically to demarcate some blocks and we'll try some different approaches within those different small blocks and see what we can come up with and judge the results down the track. Okay, well that sounds great. Yeah. So let's get into it. The very beginning of where we're going to start this trial, we've just put in some uh, timber stakes. And then we've marked a T to delineate between the different blocks. We can come back later and we'll put pickets and some hot wire or something like that in, stop the cattle getting into it. Okay, well, that's the dynamic lifter out. That's about 18 kilos out of that bag. And as you can see, we've only put it on three of the four areas that we're sampling. The fourth area is the one that we're not going to put anything on at all, apart from the mulch. Okay, so we're mixing up a variety of seeds at the moment. Eric, what uh, have you got there? Uh, Chris, so I've come up with a bit of a mix, uh, which has quite a few different species in it. I've got, uh, in here, we've got a forage sorghum, we've got a Jap-type millet, uh, we've got sunflowers, both black and grey. I have got some canola and daikon radish in here. That's the seed pod for a lab lab, because I didn't clean the seed real well. Uh, so we've also got quinoa, we've got cowpea, we have safflower, there's buckwheat, we've got mustard, sun hemp, and phacelia. Okay, so the idea behind having so many different varieties, is that just to see what shoots first, or what's reliable here, or is that something else? So having multi-species, has multiple benefits and yes there is a little bit of seeing what will grow in your country there is also a real benefit to having different root system types in that the different root systems will fix different minerals and they do this by talking to soil biology these are the things that we try to build within our systems where we increase the diversity of root systems trying to not just be grasses and having multiple root systems from different plant families, we can start fixing different minerals within the soil. So some of these are seeds I've harvested from home. It's been uh, collected from cover crop areas I've been doing for my own little uh, veggie and ginger patch. As you'll see, there's a heck of a lot of species in here all the colours of the rainbow and we really want to promote different root systems that will help us to fix different minerals, get to different depths within the soil profile and yeah, um, annual roots are a very important part 
of a pasture system because you need roots forging pathways through compacted soils and those pathways then become pathways for perennial roots to follow later. Okay, oh, very interesting. Okay, well we'll get to uh, mixing this up a bit more and then uh, we'll check back in when uh, we're ready to put some of this seed onto the ground. So we've had this wood chip here for about 18 months, maybe 20 months, just composting, just seeing what good it can do for the environment. Now, we're not too far away from where we're trialling out that uh, fertiliser and seed, and uh, Eric thought that it might be a good idea to use the biology of the timber that's here. Can you tell us a bit about that, Eric? So one of the really important things to make soil biology work there's a lot of good work being done by people like Dr Christine Jones. She's a Australian soil conservationist, multiple talents within this field. And uh, it's amazing. This is the stuff that builds soil biology. This is the interface between plants and the soil and all the minerals contained therein. So we have quite a rich source of different biologies here. It's not just the obvious mycelium. This is the stuff that grows mushrooms. May not necessarily be a safe to eat mushroom, but it is a mushroom. Uh, yeah, so this is all stuff that helps the plants talk to different bugs in the soil and ask those bugs and the biology to go and find what it's hungry for. So. By adding all of these things into one of our four trial patches there, I believe we may accelerate the results just in that one patch. Okay, well that sounds good. Well, I'll, uh, I think we should get into it. Yep. As I'm digging down below, you start noticing all these little white hairs. These are the fungal networks. These are what plants talk to the soil and find the mineral. This is all stuff that we want to promote and make happen because at the end of the day, you've got plenty of nutrition in your soil. You just can't make it plant available. And this finer stuff down the bottom of the pile where all this white hairy stuff is, the mycelium, that contains the richest stuff we can find on this farm at the moment. You'll notice I've busted up some of these white clumps just trying to get some more of that into there. There's lots of ways we can seed biology into our pastures, into our soils. Really what we need for biology to really work is a food source. And that is done by having living roots. It's not that the roots themselves are the food. It's what they put out in the way of sugars, amino acids, glomalins, all sorts of really big name things. So Eric, if I get the opportunity again in the future to get timber like this or wood chip like this dumped at my property, is this a good thing to continue doing? It's absolutely a good thing to be doing, Chris. Uh, you can never put enough organic matter and carbon in your soil. These will help with building nutrition to your plant, plant available nutrition. It will also help with storing more water during dry periods. As you build carbon, you build the ability for soil to store moisture for you. Right, and am I best leaving it in piles like this? I think this might have been two dump truck loads originally. Or should I spread it into smaller heaps? Or should I spread it thinly over a large area? Keeping it down to a smaller 
height like this pile is, now I know it didn't start this height, I'm guessing it was more up around here. Yes it was. Um, this is a much better height to be doing it at because what happens over time as temperatures build within a composting pile, you can end up at the point where it will catch fire. All oh, right. Well, we certainly don't want that in Queensland. Um, it's been an issue elsewhere. Fortunately, uh, not on our place, but for those that might have seen my video recently, we did have a fire fairly close. So that's certainly something to know. So I see that it doesn't need to be too thick. Um, well, you only need a teaspoon of biology to see the whole compost heap. If the food source is there, it will spread. Right. And all this mulch that you've put down is a food source. Now, it's all that stuff we're adding that's going to really make a big difference. Ideally, had I been here sooner, we might have um, put this grass on last, the mulch. Well, there's plenty of places around here if you ever feel like coming up and doing some <laughs> extra work. <laughs> yep, I mean, that's uh, never say never, eh? <laughs> <laughs> okay, well, that was a lot of fun. As you can see there, we've, uh, we've spread seed and fertiliser and some biology that we pulled out of uh, a, a pile of wood chip that we've had sitting there for quite some time. We've already noticed that the ants are picking up some of the seeds, so I guess we're going to lose a little bit to that. But as a little bit of rain comes over towards us, this might just be the start of uh, kicking this area off and making it look great. And I'll most certainly be coming through here and, and uh, putting in some, some uh, fencing to make sure that the cattle can't get to here. And... Uh, this uh, area should be really interesting to watch over time and I'll definitely record that and I'll keep you up to speed on what happens. Now, I'd just like to say thank you um, very much, Eric, for coming here today, showing me the right way to do this. Uh, it's a way, I don't know if it's the right way, but I, I'm a big believer in trialling things and, and, you know, working with what you've got. This hasn't been a massive outlay in cost uh, for either of us and I don't think it hurts anything to try it. Uh, look, yeah, I think if we can get the weather to do what we need and bring us some moisture, this may very well prove to be, in the longer term, a very fertile area for you. As I said earlier, it's why we picked this spot, because it is right on the brow of a slope. Everything falls away from here. So this is part of my thought process, that if we can get it happening up higher in the landscape, we can get the biology happening, the different seed cycles happening, that it can migrate down the hill. We we'll use nature to do the job for us. So these things don't have to be big cost outlays and it's what I really want to promote people trying. It's taken us a couple of hours to figure this out, set it up, put it out. It's not a big investment and potentially could be very rewarding. Okay, well, as you can see, the rain is really starting to kick off now. So for anybody who would like to uh, contact Eric from Change the Soil, I'll leave his contact details in the description of this video. And I would most certainly encourage you to reach out and discuss what your needs are and see if you can work out a deal that you're both comfortable with. Thanks for watching. Bye Thank for now. You.